What's up, y'all? T Cash here. Today, I'm gonna go over how much money I spent on my Joshua Tree Airbnb and give you guys a budget breakdown of everything that I spent on, everything that I did to get this Airbnb up and running, and um, a full, full budget breakdown. So, tune in. I'm gonna give you guys all the details, all the ins and outs, and uh, how I finance this and how, I, how I'm getting it off the ground. So, stay tuned. Let's get to it. Peace. <music> For this Joshua Tree Airbnb, my budget was to stay around twenty-five thousand and thirty thousand dollars. If I can stay under twenty-five, uh, that would mean um, I mean I did a good job. So, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I was super adamant that I could be that I could spend around twenty-five thousand dollars, but. Um, yeah, that was short-lived, and uh, I was probably at the $25,000 mark at around two and a half weeks in, and today marks about a week and five, I mean a month and five days into the project, and we are about $12,000 over our expected budget, but like I said, I'm going to give you guys the whole spiel, the whole breakdown, you know, what I'm spending my money on what's going into this, how this project has to get up and off the ground, and how I'm going to make this project work. So without further ado, let's get to it and let's go to the screen. All right. Well, here we go. Here are my Joshua Tree expenses. As you can see, I'm at the $36,000 mark. Um, that goal was to be at $25,000. So I'm sorry, $11,000 over budget right now. Um, and I do expect another three, $4,000 to go into this project. But um, let's just get to the breakdowns of everything. Uh, furniture. So furniture uh, cost me around uh, $10.99, so $11,000 of furniture. Um, now that had to do with beds, living room, decor, um, you know, sheets. What else? Couches, every all type of furniture because it's going to be a fully furnished, it's going to be an Airbnb. And um, I did have a budget for $8,000 for the furniture. Uh, happened to go a little above that, you know, finding stuff that I really like, spending stuff on money that, spending money on things that um, that I really liked and not, not going just the cheap route. Um, and it is an Airbnb, it's not just a rental, so you kind of want to just. Uh, you know, give it a little style. Well, me, my, my felt was give it some style, give it some flavor, so it's not just a regular Airbnb listing that everyone's gonna see. So, um, so one thing I have in here is the jacuzzi, and I don't know why this is doing this right now. Technical difficulties. All right, so the jacuzzi, um, $3,100. Now, in the other video, if you guys seen the jacuzzi, it's a pretty nice jacuzzi. And for $3,100 for that jacuzzi, you're probably thinking, how the heck did you get a jacuzzi for $3,100? And uh, I like to brag, I have to brag about this because I've called up every jacuzzi spot in Joshua Tree, the high desert, the low desert. Um, and they told me that I have to be on a waiting list for at least uh, December to get a jacuzzi. And the jacuzzis were double this price, about six to eight thousand dollars, and to be on a waiting list. And for me, time is money, and I can't wait for no jacuzzi. So uh, I looked up my friend, my handy friend, my favorite tool, one of my favorite tools, Facebook Marketplace, where I do find some steals and some good stuff on. And I saw a jacuzzi that I was listed for two hours, and I told the guy I will be there in the next two hours, and then my workers drive out to um, drive out an hour to go pick up this jacuzzi. We ended up getting it and um, I have to tell you guys a story because it is a steal and it's a good deal and I have a jacuzzi. So hot tub, jacuzzi, whatever you want to call it, we got it. But I don't know if that's considered furniture and if it's not, then that means I am at $7,800, about $8,000, plus the outdoor furniture that I'm about to purchase will probably bring me to that $10,000 for furniture, which is not too bad, not too bad at all. So that's my furniture spiel. 
Um, if you guys are looking to do any short-term rentals and try to make it look nice, uh, um, just just the code of thought. You're probably going to be around that eight thousand to you know twelve. And if you try to go super high end, they don't even think about spending less than fifteen thousand uh, dollars. Yeah. Now next phase was uh, one of my main contractors, Oscar, and Oscar. Uh, and full disclosure, I get all my contractors. I get them off Craigslist. Now this is a hit or a miss, and. Um, you know, I do like a big, um, um, what do you call it? I do a, what's that word? I do a lot of due diligence on my uh, on my um, contracts when I find them on uh, Craigslist. Now, contractors are doing a lot of work right now. A lot of people are backed up when you try to go through house or, uh, or you know, any of these online Google contractors, contractors, you're trying to get referrals. A lot of them are backed up. So um, when I go on Craigslist, more likely if they're on Craigslist, they need a job right away. And they usually get them for specific gigs um, in my house, whether it be just electrical work, just plumbing work, just um, flooring or stuff like that. And um, my tips for going with contractors, Tcash's tips, or would be um, going through Craigslist would be definitely uh, meet them up in person. So every contractor that messes me on Craigslist, um, I first ask them to show me photos of their work, and if the photos look good, um, I would meet up with them in a you know local area. I would meet up with well, me personally. I met up with my contractor in downtown Joshua Tree, and um, got to feel them, um, see if they're you know trustworthy. Make sure they're going to show up on time every day. And uh, what else? Yeah, that was pretty much it. I met, yeah, I met them up in person. I even asked that they had a job going on where I can show up to their job site to see the work that they're doing and making sure they're professional as well. So that was pretty much, uh, that's pretty much the main thing that I do. I ask them for photos. I meet them up, meet up with them in person in a nice public area like downtown Joshua Tree during the day, of course. And, um, you know, maybe show up to their job if they have one going on. And, uh, oh, last thing, I always pay them after the job is completely done. And, uh, you know, I think I save a lot more money doing it this way than going through the, uh, you know, the big contractor companies and whatnot. So, so that's what I did. And Oscar's been doing a great job for me. So if anyone's in the Joshua Tree area and needs an Oscar, hit me up. Uh, I won't even charge you a referral fee, but um, that's how I find my contractors. Uh, a lot of people frown on Craigslist, but uh, I think if you do the right due diligence and uh, you find the right people, it can work out for you. But yeah, so phase one, the ceiling. As you guys know, I had uh, ceiling, cabinets, electric work. Um, paid my contractor Oscar $1,500 for that. Uh, did a good job scraping off the popcorn ceiling, uh, making it look nice, all modern and whatnot. So that was cool. Uh, materials, $575 uh, for that stuff. Floors, uh, I did a creamy oak uh, laminate waterproof flooring. They were $3 a square foot. So those added up to being $2,700 and they look really nice. I can't wait to show you guys that with the end project and the end home. Uh, it's super fire, so those were a good deal. And floors labor, you charge me $2,000 to install the floors. Um, pretty solid price. Uh, I guess probably like $1.50 a square feet, a square foot. So I uh, wasn't mad about that at all. Uh, under laminate, you know, you gotta put this stuff under your, uh, your laminate floors. Uh, that was the cost of it. Uh, this is probably extra floors that I have to buy, $236. Baseboards, 283, we chose, you know, the uh, square um, looking baseboards, which give it a modern touch to it. Smart equipment, um, this is the Google Nest, Amazon Ring, cameras and stuff like that. Probably need a couple more cameras, so that might go up to $1,000. Um, super dope though, I love those Amazon Rings and the, uh, the locks and stuff like that. So it's easier for Airbnb guests to get in and out of uh, the home and whatnot. And the last thing is the garage. Uh, my home needed a new garage door uh, just because it didn't work previously. I was, I was notified of this prior to the purchase. So um, my new garage door was $1,300 and uh, it works great. So happy about that as well. And that's for the garage door and the uh, installation of it. So next phase was the kitchen. 
Uh, my kitchen backsplash is actually being installed this week. Uh, I paid $322 for this backsplash, and uh, it wasn't just your average looking backsplash, it was actually a pretty nice backsplash, so I'm happy to see when this actually gets installed inside the home. Uh, I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, outdoor lights cost me uh, $120, not too bad, but um, um, I do, these are really like these modern outdoor lights that are on almost every modern home you see. They're the matte black um, ones, I could probably pull it up on the screen, but if not, I think you guys know what I'm talking about if you see the modern homes. I'm probably gonna add two more, so I'll probably get $200 for that. And yeah, those, they're really dope. I don't know why that's in the kitchen section, but whatever. Um, granite, granite countertops um, were $2,500. You know, this, I feel like it's tough to get good deals on granite uh, just because it has to be installed the right way and white granite quartz or whatever I got. Um, it's tough to get good deals and you kind of get what you pay for when you get this type of stuff. So um, granite happened to be uh, $2,500 for my new countertops and honestly, they look fire. So uh, I'm not too mad about that but I definitely thought it was gonna be like $1,500 to $1,000 so um, there, there goes an extra thousand dollars that I didn't budget for uh, HVAC so going into the home I knew that the HVAC system the compressor outside wasn't working and uh, I knew I needed to get a new one so um, I got uh, my contractor Oscar to go uh, got a new HVAC system and installed it for $2,100 super solid deal if you ask me and uh, that's that's the system and the installation of it so um, and it's working fire it's working fine and yeah so I was happy about that uh, we painted my whole house the whole interior house white uh, we might add some color into it don't know yet but um, as of now I like it I like the way it looks all white and uh, that's everything bathrooms bedrooms kitchen all everything and that was $1,300. Like I said, get you uh, a good reasonable contractor. And uh, you guys probably, you know, some of you guys who are, uh, you know, doing this right now are probably like, well, these prices are a little bit too cheap, but um, this is real deal. And I'm not, <laughs> I'm not lying about any of these prices at all. Uh, this is where we're at, but um, yeah. Doorknobs, uh, so a little extra little stuff that we did in the house. Um, Doorknobs, $154. Interior finishes cost me a thousand. That's probably, uh, um, you know, extra little stuff, uh, handles, all that other stuff. So that cost me a thousand. Ceiling fans and electric cost me $540. We put ceiling fans in every room. They were in there before. Um, so we put, you know, we did it again. And uh, just to keep it real cool, in case, you know, one of our Airbnb guests, um, I don't know if they, it gets hot out there in Joshua Tree, so they got ceiling fans just in case of anything else. And they have lights in them too, so uh, that's cool. So uh, uh, Oscar payment, you know, when he does little extra stuff in the house, you know, um, what else, like what is he doing? Um, just other little maintenance stuff that, you know, for the home, uh, painting doors and doing this other little stuff, um, you know, it's an extra thousand dollars for probably the week that we gave him. Um, but Home Depot run was about $286. Uh, this is probably extra material, I didn't write it down. Uh, Amazon paid around 775. I forgot what that was for. Sometimes I'm in a rush when I'm ordering stuff and just, uh, at least I put that number down. So that was probably for like, extra furnishing and stuff or extra um, things for the home. Oscar Labor, another Labor Day when he was just doing work, hauling out stuff, um, $700. So, Let's get to the landscaping. Now, landscaping was definitely way more than what I expected. I didn't think I was gonna spend this much and I probably have to spend another uh, $1,000 or $2,000 on landscaping, but right now I'm at 4,100 for landscaping. Um, now, I had a lot of big trees in my backyard and the tree removal was $1,100. Um, definitely more than what I expected. I uh, just bought some pavers. Uh, today and those were $200 and those are gonna be like new walkways I head out to the fire pit in the jacuzzi um, getting the backyard leveled getting the dirt cleaned out uh, rototilled and compressed and all that together really and pouring some cement from our hot from my hot tub jacuzzi um, it's gonna cost me around 2800 and I just 
just adding extra really a thousand, maybe two thousand. Um, you know, just some extra additions to the backyard. And uh, honestly, I think that'll that'll make it that'll get it right. So um, that's pretty much where we're at. And the last expense really that I have to pay is for the short-term rental permit. Short-term rental permit for everything altogether is four hundred thirty-four dollars. Uh, and like I said, this is all my expenses to get the Airbnb up and running. And um, in total, with the jacuzzi on the side, let's put it all back over. In total, we are at $36,000. Now, $36,000 is, like I said, $11,038 over budget. Um, if we wanted to stay at that $25,000 mark, but you know, sometimes with Airbnbs, um, you can't, you can't, you can't cut the corners too much because it, it, it'll just bite you back in the butt when you're trying to list the property and uh, say something goes wrong, and um, you know someone makes a complaint, you know that's just gonna hurt you. So I figured, you know, I can't really cut the corners too much with this uh, property um, or this project. So uh, that's where I'm at right now. I probably will hit forty thousand. And just to finish it all off, uh, like I said, we're 95% done and we're right there. But um, overall, I'm loving the way it looks. And like I said, I'm not too, I'm not too worried that much about this property because I do think if um, it appraises that $280,000 and um, the work I put into it, if I put in $40,000, you know, at 280. I still regain that equity because I expect the home to be worth three hundred and fifty to four hundred thousand dollars. So there is a chance by the price that I purchased it at, that I'll be able to take out um, some of that money when I do refinance it six months after my purchase price. And that is the goal of this project, really. Um, that is another goal. So I, you know, although we will, ugh, although we will be making money uh, through Airbnb. In VRBO on a month-to-month -month basis, day-to-day -day basis. Sorry, um, I do expect to gain some appreciation, and uh, whether I decide to do a home equity line of credit or a cash out refi, uh, you know, as the market's exploding right now and going crazier and crazier, I definitely want to take advantage of this, and uh, definitely when the appraiser comes back in and checks out this home, I um, want to be able to show them that you know. This is a top-notch quality home, and you should be copying it with all the top-notch quality homes in the area. And uh, this is not just based off the money I'm putting in and what I think, it's also based on comps and what the other homes are selling for in the area, so I'm looking out for those as well. And regardless, uh, you know, at that $40,000, my numbers still work out, and for a cash on cash return, um, for a cash on cash return um, method or, you know, in, in that sense, for a cash for cash return, I definitely expect to be able to uh, be at at least 50% in this project. So, um, honestly, every project I do expect 50% cash for cash return. And um, this one, um, this one I, I know I will be at when it's all said and done, whether it's just from Airbnb income or it's Airbnb and the cash out refinance or the HELOC. Um, I think I will be there and um, I hopefully I can take this property and roll it into my next one. So that's the goal here and that's pretty much it. That's a full breakdown of uh, how much money I spent on my Joshua Tree uh, project and next week stay tuned because we're going to drop the video of what my Airbnb looks like and all that good stuff. So um, the full finished tour and it will be ready next week and when we were, we're one month we're one month and five days in, about five weeks in, and that was my period to be kind of finished with this project. So give me one more week, six weeks, and I think it'll be all set, ready to go. And yeah, so and if you guys have any questions, please feel free to let me know. And like always, hit that like button, that subscribe button, drop a comment below, and let me know what you guys think. So that's it. Peace. Thank you.